Hello, I'm Becca and welcome to my acrylic pouring art channel. Today is very exciting because I'm going to be starting out a new series that I'm calling Transcending Light. Back in December, I took some time to just do some experimenting, trying out new types of paints, new color combinations, and new layering options. And I ended up making this really, really beautiful painting, kind of by accident, but I absolutely love the way it turned out. So I decided to go ahead and try it on a larger canvas to see if I could duplicate the look and feel of this painting. On the bottom of this canvas, I'm using dioxazine purple. It is straight dioxazine purple. I have not mixed my own custom base for this. I'm just using the paint mixed with Floetrol and water. If you want to see how I mix up my paints, you can click on this video here. I'm using my palette knife to move the paints around and to try to get my base layer kind of thin, but not too thin so that the paints can still move over it, but it doesn't take a really, really long time to dry. <laughs> Trying to find a happy medium there. On the top of this canvas, I am going to pour phthalo blue, which you probably know by now is my favorite blue color. Now, to the left of my canvas, you can see my pour colors, and I'm gonna take some time right now and talk you through my strategy with the colors that I chose. This one is gonna be all about the metallics. The very first color that you see there is a pearl color by Amsterdam. It is the pearl blue, and as you can see, when it's wet and it's not layered on anything, it looks white. But as the paint dries, depending on what the color underneath of it is, it has a different look. So if the color underneath is a dark color, it's gonna look more blue. If the color underneath is a light color, it's gonna look more of like an iridescent white, which creates a really, really interesting look to a painting. The other colors that I have as my pore colors are copper, silver, gold, cerulean blue. I am also going to include a titanium white layer underneath all of the pearl, blue, and metallic colors. That titanium white layer is super important to the look of this. Without that, the pearl color would always look blue and you wouldn't have the variation of color. Also, I think that the blue, cerulean blue, would disappear into the phthalo blue and the dioxazine purple and it would have a much more dull look to it but as you can see once we get there the titanium white and the phthalo blue and the titanium white and the purple just create this almost glowing light look when blown together with all the other colors i have some colors left over from my rainbow soft rainbow pour series and i'm going to use some of those colors on the corner of the base just to give it a little bit of variation Okay, it is finally time for the pour colors. I am starting with titanium white, and this is mixed with Floetrol and water, and this is gonna be my base layer that is gonna provide the contrast needed between the dark base colors and the pour colors that are gonna go over top. So I started with the white, and then the next color that I'm gonna put down is the cerulean blue. I don't need to add too much of this, just a little bit right in the middle of the white area there. After the cerulean blue, I'm going to add a pretty healthy amount of that pearl blue color I was telling you about earlier. This color will interact with the blue beneath it, it will interact with the white, it will interact with the base colors, 
and it just creates some amazing effects. On top of that, I'm adding silver, and then I will add the copper and the gold. This, the magic in this painting is really all about the pearl and the metallic colors. When they blow together, they create some amazing cells. If you're one of those people that's looking for cells in a Dutch pour, this is a really great way to get that with no silicone and no additives. The colors did spread a bit since I put down a pretty healthy amount of the pour colors. So I'm gonna take my blow dryer and I'm just gonna push them back towards the middle. And as you can see up there in the corner, did you see where the purple was not moving over the pour colors? That's an indication there that I do not have enough paint. Had I tried to blow those colors out without adding more purple there, they wouldn't have moved very well and it would have given me a look that was not what I was going for. <laughs> so one of the most important things to remember is when you're, if you're trying to replicate this look, is you want to blow in different directions. So as you can see there, I started out down in the purple area and I blew up over the blue area for the one side. Then I'm starting in the blue area and I'm pull, pulling the blue down over the purple area. That creates that really cool twist look in the middle. It kind of looks like a, a knot. And then I'm just taking the colors and I'm blowing them out over the corners nice and slowly. I am going at 100% um, speed here so you can see how slowly that I'm blowing these colors. And then I'm just taking them, trying to replicate the look of that other painting I was telling you about, blowing the colors over the blue there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing down in the purple to just continue that twisting of light look that I think this looks like. <laughs> I don't know if you agree with me, but to me it really looks almost like a bolt of energy or a bolt of light that is just moving and twisting and blasting its energy everywhere. I really, really love the way that this one feels. I just really love the energy and the feel of this painting. I hope you love it as much as I do. I'm gonna bring you in for a close-up so you can see what the cells look like when they're, as they're forming and as they're wet, and then I will show you what the painting looks like when it's dry.